Tomorrow, a group of lawmakers will meet with a Yale psychiatrist to discuss President Trump's mental fitness. One congressman has already proposed a bill to make it easier for Congress to invoke the 25th Amendment and remove President Trump from office if he's found mentally unfit. Joining us now is that congressman, Democrat Jamie Raskin of Maryland. Congressman, thanks so much for being here. Good morning. Delighted to be with you. So this meeting tomorrow with the Yale psychiatrist, who called for that and what prompted it? Well, let's see. Um, I believe that Dr. Lee is coming to visit a, a bunch of people in Washington. She's been here before. Um, the bill that I've introduced, H.R. 1987, I actually submitted back in April, long before I'd met her or even before their book came out. And so um, what prompted that? I mean, there's a couple of things that happened. Listen, the psychiatrist met in December with lawmakers. I know you've spoken to her a couple of times. You've proposed this bill. What's prompting this? Well, the 25th Amendment in Section 4 says that the vice president in the cabinet or the vice president in a body set up by Congress can determine that there's presidential incapacity for reasons physical or mental. Um, and I think that concerns have been raised from the very beginning of the presidency about the cognitive state of the president, the emotional state of the president, and his ability to take care that the laws are faithfully executed, which is the principal job of the president of the United States. And so um, I don't take a position on whether or not the president um, currently has capacity or incapacity, but I'm taking the position that we've got a constitutional responsibility to act under the 25th Amendment to set up the body that's been called for. I see. And so yours is more focused. What you're calling for with the 25th Amendment is more focused on procedure than actual diagnosis of the president's mental fitness. And I do want to get... I, I want to get to that in a second. But first, I just want to get to some of the things that Dr. Lee has said, okay? She has said... She's described the president as dangerous. She has said he is becoming very unstable very quickly. Mr. Trump is showing signs of impairment. She hasn't evaluated him. How can she say those things? Well, as I understand it, I'll let her speak for herself, of course, but as I understand it, she's taking the position and the other psycho psychologists and psychiatrists and neurologists who participated in the book are saying that there are warning signs and they consider it a very dangerous situation without rendering a specific diagnosis. And of course, they've got a First Amendment right to do that, just like the president has a First Amendment right to declare himself a very stable genius, or Steve Bannon has the right to say that the president has totally lost it, and so on. Everybody can opine, but what we're looking for in Congress is a real process. And luckily, because of the vision of Senator Birch Bayh and Senator Robert F. Kennedy, we've got a process that's built into the 25th Amendment, which is that we have the authority to set up this body, and it would be bipartisan, bicameral, independent, and it would have on it physicians, psychiatrists, former statesmen and stateswomen, and they would be able to act in the event of a crisis. A couple more questions before I get to that process. Um, you're right. She has a First Amendment right to say these things. However, the American Psychiatric Association really frowns on this. In fact, they have a protocol for not uh, diagnosing somebody without evaluating them. And I know that maybe she hasn't given an exact, like, DSM diagnosis. However, when she says that Mr. Trump is showing signs of impairment and that the president is very dangerous, I mean, isn't that hyperbole? Um, well, it may or may not be, depending on your perspective. I mean, you know, they've been invoking what they call delusional behavior. So the president one day admits that the Access Hollywood tape is true. He apologized for it. And then a few months later denies the existence of it and says that the whole thing is fake news. You know, there are newspapers, I think it's the Washington Post, that's collected what they call thousands of lies told by the president. The other interpretation is that these are not lies, but he actually believes them. And that is delusional behavior. But again, you know, anybody can pine under the First Amendment, but what we need is a process to deal with the possibility of a real crisis. You know, we got 535 members of Congress. We've only got one president in the United States. That's why we have a 25th Amendment that was adopted in the nuclear age. And the senators who introduced it and pushed for it, I've read the entire legislative history, they said this is very serious business. If you have a president who goes into a coma or loses his memory or has a psychotic break or for some other reason is unable to render properly the powers and duties of office. Okay, so as I understand it, the way the 25th Amendment is triggered is by the vice president. And your point is that Mike Pence will never do that. There's no scenario that you could imagine by which Mike Pence would do that. So you are trying to, to 
call for um, a revision whereby it would be what you think is a more impartial body than the cabinet, the president's own cabinet, or the vice president. And I'm just wondering, do you have... Can I interrupt you there? Yeah, but that's not... yep. Yeah, that's not exactly right. It's not triggered by the vice president. If you read the 25th Amendment in Section 4, it says the vice president and the cabinet can act or the vice president in a body set up by Congress. So uh, the body can initiate it, the cabinet can initiate it, or the vice president can initiate okay, it. Okay, so you're sort of planning for a, a rainy day of some kind. And I'm just wondering, are other lawmakers going along with you and signing on, and do you have any Republican support? So I introduced it back in April. Uh, yesterday, um, we had 60 co-sponsors who've joined onto it, um, and no Republicans have done so yet. Obviously, a number of Republicans have expressed their concerns about what they've described as erratic and unstable behavior in the White House, which one Republican senator described as an adult daycare center. Again, you don't have to take a position one way or another, but if you think that enough questions have been raised, then we think that we need to be prepared for this. Um, and that's what the 25th Amendment's all yeah. about. Question. In December, when you met with that Yale psychiatrist and there was a group of lawmakers that did so, we understand there was one Republican in there. Can you tell us who that was? Um, but I was not part of any group meeting with Dr. Lee. She came to my office to mm -hmm. visit me for a moment. And but, I had to go vote. So right, I, but I you just, know about it. And so do, can you tell us who that Republican was? But I actually don't know. I'd be, I'd be interested to know who it is, too. But look, I mean, Senator Corker has raised very specific questions. Senator Flake has raised very specific questions. So, you know, I don't think we need to get to the level of investigative journalism to see who said what to whom. We've got a whole book written by these psychologists and neurologists and psychiatrists, and we've got a number of members of Congress uh, who have raised very yeah. legitimate and valid questions. So if we can get you know, one or two levels above just the name calling that's been taking place the last few days, mm -hmm. we can develop the process that the Constitution calls for. Congressman Jamie Raskin, thank you very much for explaining it to us today. Great to thank have you, you on your day. Chris. There's another component that's every bit as important. So whether Congress, Congress puts together the panel or it's the cabinet and the VP yeah. or whomever, it then goes to Congress and you need a two-third vote on it. I just don't see where the numbers are. Not now. Yes, listen, his point is that he wants the process in place. Maybe it will never be triggered, but he wants the right process right. in place. They have the process.